Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Q2 FY23 Earnings Conference Call of Rani Group. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Tavakar Pingli from Ernst and Young. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Pingli. Hey, thank you, Michelle. Uh, good afternoon, friends. Uh, welcome to the Q2 and H1 FY23 earnings call of the Rani Group. To take you through the results and answer your questions today, uh, we have the managing team from the Rani Group, uh, represented by Mr. L. Ganesh, uh, Chairman and Managing Director, Rani Holdings Limited, and uh, Mr. Harish Lakshman, Vice Chairman, Rani Holdings Limited. Mr. P. A. Padmanabhan, President of Finance and Group CFO, Mr. Shiva Chandrasekhar, Executive Vice President, Secretary of Legal Services, and Mr. N. P. Shri Kumar, Senior Vice President, of Finance and CFO of Rani Holdings Limited. Please note that we have sent you the press release and also the presentation link of the deck. Uh, in case any of you have not received the presentation, uh, it will be there on the website or in the BSC side of Rani. Or you could write to us at EY and we'd be happy to send the detailed earnings presentation over to you. Before I start, uh, I'd like to say that everything that is said on this call that reflects any outlook for the future or which can be construed as a forward-looking statement must be viewed in conjunction with the risks and uncertainties that we face. These uncertainties are risks included but not limited to what we mentioned in the prospectus and subsequent annual reports, which you can find on our website. Uh, with that said, I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Ganesh. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Divakar. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all of you had a good Diwali last week. Thank you for dialing in. I'd like to welcome you all to this teleconference. You have seen our H1 FY23 performance highlights posted on our website. I'd like to provide a few comments on the industry before we move to the company performance. The demand environment in the auto industry remains favorable in H1 FY23. We saw some easing of supply chain challenges and plateauing of some of the commodity prices in India. However, semiconductor chip shortage seems to still be a bottleneck in Europe and US where some of our customers had to adjust their production accordingly. Some commodity prices like barn steel continue to show an upward trend. Passenger vehicle segment has reported the best ever figures in the first six months of this year. The share of utility vehicles which has been increasing in the last few years, has now come to almost 49% thanks to some new launches in FY23. The commercial vehicle segment registered a good growth during this period, particularly in the M and HCV segment. The growth was very high in Q1 because of the base effect and somewhat softened in Q2. However, the increased focus on infrastructure spending and better utilization of the fleet is expected to help the segment grow for the rest of the year. Farm tractors has reported best ever production in the first half of this fiscal. This was due to the fact that 2022 was the fourth year at a stretch that the country has had a normal or good monsoon season. Two-wheeler segment experienced good growth in India. However, the exports saw a decline. This segment, especially at the entry level, needs to be watched closely as we understand there are some signs of increase in inventory in the pipeline. The penetration of electric two-wheelers is about 4% during this period. The IMF growth forecast for India, though marginally reduced on a couple of occasions, continues to be a healthy 6.8%. The global headwinds, however, needs to be seen for any negative impacts on our economy. With these comments, I will hand it over to Harish for his comments and review of the H1 performance of the Rane Group. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh. Good afternoon, everyone. So at the group uh, aggregate level, the total revenue increased by 33% with strong demand across both domestic and international customers. The EBITDA margin of Rane Holdings consolidated increased by 155 bips supported by higher volume and improved operational performance. 
higher commodity prices however limited the profitability improvement i will now share some details around each of our businesses coming to rani mitra we secured for 105 crore per annum orders from various domestic and international customers for sharing product with the operational improvement and higher capacity utilization we expect to achieve financial turnaround of the light metal castings india business the light metal castings business in america has been able to sustain the operational performance improvements however the demand environment in us is challenging coming to rani engine valve uh, as we have mentioned before rani engine valve generates about uh, 44% of its revenue from ev insulated segment and customers we keep we continue to keep a close watch with the development of electrification and try and maximize our ev insulated sales we continue to progress on the financial turnaround of the business broadly addressing the following higher capacity re, uh, realization and new business ramp up increasing the mix of exports and ev insulated segment and manufacturing cost reduction strong growth with price recovery from customers and improved operational performance resulted in margin expansion coming to rani brake line in our oe business rbl is a market leader in passenger vehicle segment and has dominant presence in the after market and we continue to maintain these positions the ebitda margin however got impacted marginally due to mainly the commodity prices and unfavorable product mix coming to our joint venture with zf zf rane uh, got an approval under the pli scheme to localize both airbag inflator as well as seat belt webbing we continue to introduce latest technology products from our joint venture partners portfolio we also won orders for about 240 crores for our occupant safety products and rupees 150 crores for steering product steering business benefited from the recovery of the commercial vehicle segment and the especially the increased demand from the mnd tv customers strong offtake from both domestic and export customers continue for the occupant safety business coming to rani nsk our manual steering column business benefited on account of the upcycle in the commercial vehicle segment our electric power steering business faced slower demand uh, from maruti mainly due to the uh, served models uh, having semiconductor shortage the adverse product mix and increase in logistics cost impacted the profitability of this business as mr ganesh said we continue to remain cautiously optimistic about the demand environment and the opportunities ahead the geopolitical situation and effect of monetary tightening remains the major headwinds with these remarks we will now open any questions that you may have thank you thank you very much We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchscreen phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equiris Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello sir, and congratulations for the third number. My first question is regarding our US operations. Uh, <clears throat> we continue to lose money in US. Um, what is the strategic thinking in terms of the group? Um, <clears throat> by what time? And I know you have been discussing internally about this. So, what by what time? do we think either we can break even or will pull the plug on this operation i think i we had indicated uh, somewhere in towards late last year that you know we are committed to this business for another period of 2 years uh, and you know we did see positive development at the us our order booking as well as the us economy at that point in time 
uh, and we continue to remain state the same. You know, our position is, you know, we will take stock during 23, all our strategic options, 2023. Now, of course, you know, the, the recent challenging situation in the U.S. Uh, uh, economy is only complicating the situation. But having said that, there is no change. So somewhere during the course of 2023, we will, you know, take a view on uh, what our strategic options are. Sure. Uh, sir, uh, if I look at uh, at least the uh, uh, steel prices, and I, I don't know about specialty steel, but you know, HRC prices, we have seen significant correction from the peak uh, 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 in terms of uh, uh, the uh, prices that we see, uh, but we do not see that kind of improvement in our margins, especially how low the margins were for some of our companies. Uh, by when do you think we will essentially get the benefit of some of these lower commodities? Uh, will it by Q3? Will it be by Q4? You know, I mean, we, if you see, actually, even as of today, the steel price is higher than what it was 12 months ago. So while there has been some increase, you know, we are yet to feel the impact of the in, increase in the decrease in a significant way. We are also hopeful that the commodity prices will start coming down. Uh, so, I mean, if that, if the commodity prices continue to come down rapidly, then I think in another one to two quarters, we will start seeing the impact. Sure. And sir, can you talk a little bit about MSK, both in terms of operational performance? We saw um, uh, much lower margins in MSK this quarter, uh, which is very different from all the other four companies that we operate, which, which, saw, which saw improvement to some extent. Uh, NSK saw margins going down. Uh, and also, obviously, the second question is regarding, do we see any more um, uh, of the uh, write-offs that we may, uh, or, or last year was the, was the last write-off that we saw? Yeah, as far as the first question, you know, I think I mentioned it in my opening remarks that unfortunately for uh, Rane NSK, uh, you know, the served models that we supply to Maruti Suzuki, those models had more semiconductor shortage. So as a result, you know, our top line uh, got impacted uh, more than, you know, otherwise would have happened. So it's not in line with the market. So that was, so as a result of that, there's been a, a margin squeeze. Uh, as far as the warranty issue is concerned, you know, I think uh, whatever provisions uh, that was there earlier when we, when we did the incremental provision about, what, six, nine months ago, the anticipation was, you know, that will be the highest. As of today, that continues to be the situation. During the year, you know, depending on how the next six months progress, we will come back. But... Uh, it is difficult to give a clear answer how it will uh, continue. Sure. And sir, uh, we have generated around 88 crore of operating cash flow. Assuming the run rate continues, probably we will do 180 odd crore of operating cash flow. What is your capex for this year, vis-a-vis that kind of cash flow? Uh, just hold on. Let me see. Let me the uh well, we are not able to hear you yeah yeah no we just collect trying to collect the data uh, one second. So full. So, so, so 37 crores is our capex plan for the year. 37 crores. So the, is it fair to assume that rest of the money will be used to reduce the debt? Yes. Thank you so much, sir, and best of luck. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star in one now. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Ketam from Alpha Invesco. Please go ahead. Yeah, is this audible? Sure, audible. Kindly proceed. Yeah. 
Uh, sir, I just wanted to know, uh, book uh, on the ZFRI uh, sales in H1, how much was uh, occupant safety and after that, how much was uh, domestic occupant safety? Yeah. If you are asking for Q2 data or uh, for six months? For six months, no, no, no. Yeah, six months is uh, 436 crores is for the uh, occupant safety. And the steering is about 402 crores. Okay. And then uh, out of the 436, how much was the domestic? Yeah. Out of the 436, uh, domestic was 172. Okay. And uh, this is a new order uh, which we are receiving in uh, OAC in Jennifer. Is it uh, mostly from domestic order flow? No, combination of both. Largely domestic, but some exports is also there. Okay, okay, understood. Um, so yeah, okay, next question is NSK. So in, in, um, in my conversation, I think we had uh, total provisioning made over the last two, three years is almost 475 crores. So how much does uh, at H2 stand utilized out of the 475 crores provision? Yeah, the total provision, uh, my understanding is about 490 crores. Okay. And uh, so about 50 crores is remaining. Okay. Okay. Um, sir, and, uh, on the LMCA, so what uh, the understanding is, we've seen a revenue jump in H2, but is it mostly uh, because of, uh, you know, dollar appreciation or uh, how has been the, you know, tonnage, uh, you know, we've been making the casting business in volume, what is the volume growth compared to the value growth in LMC? No, see, the volume growth compared to last year has been much better because, you know, last year was also a, a COVID year, uh, but however, the uh, semiconductor shortage in the U.S. market uh, has impacted our our own plan. So we are not in line with our plan because largely because of the semiconductor shortage, and of course, the the last one or two months development of what's happening in the U.S. economy is is adding to the concern. Okay. So and this year we, uh, on LMCA, so can we break in at 200 crores LMCA business? LMCI? India? LMCA, LMC, I mean the US, uh, can we break in at uh, 200 crores? I think the earlier guidance was I think 40, 45 million or I don't know. Like that. Yeah, it has to be in that range, about close to 40 million. But of course, you know, it's also a function of the aluminium price because that plays a big role. But in today's uh, today's aluminium price, yeah, it's about 40. Okay, understand. And uh, last Peter, question is, uh, yeah, Peter, just uh, sorry to interrupt. I would request you to rejoin the queue, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Akshar Hariya from Multi Act PNF. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my question was uh, with regards to our uh, NSK JV. So if you look at the revenue growth, which we've done in the uh, JV is about 15%. And you know, when we compare that to the revenue growth um, of our largest customer, uh, their production uh, volume growth for the first half has been about 34 to 35%. So, you know, uh, could you please, uh, you know, let us know some specific models which have been facing this semiconductor issue because of which, you know, we are significantly uh, lower than the customer's uh, volume growth? Yeah. Uh, So we are not able to hear you. Yes, yeah, no, you were on mute. So, so the uh, yeah. So there are certain specific models, which is Bellino, okay, Swift, Telerio. and Telerio, where the where the production was not in line with their plans. But some other vehicles, where some of them which we are not there, they did higher sales. Okay, so these models would gen, you know, like the these three models are like hundred percent single source with us. Yes. Okay. 
and sir uh, you know maruti has launched uh, some new models especially in the suv uh, segment uh, you know brezza and vetara and they have relaunched brezza and launched the grand vetara so uh, how have been our wins are we present in any of these platforms we are happy to say that we are we are in those platforms okay and we are single source over here sir yes okay thank you thanks for answering my questions thank you we have the next question from the line of krishna kumar shrinivasan from blind hill capital please go ahead the yeah, government sir and uh, congrats on a uh, sort of improved numbers across the board uh, sir on uh, msk rani you just mentioned that you got some businesses uh, Uh, on the uh, models that uh, uh, that the previous parts were asked but in the presentation we don't see uh, any uh, order wins were mentioned in the uh, in, in the electric uh, uh, power steering uh, side for rani and sk sound vehicles and manual steering so could you just uh, uh, clarify this sir yeah yeah so what we report when we say we won an order for 100 crores here 200 crores there these are purchase orders that we receive in our company but most of these go into production either 12 to 24 months from now so what you are seeing today the grand vitara and uh, you know the toyota uh, high high rider we won the order more than one and a half years ago so we usually report that <coughs> understand sir understand. so so uh, you know since we don't have uh, probably the old numbers it does uh, so in uh, if you look at it on a comparative basis is the uh, order book momentum uh, getting better from model uh, wins basically are we getting better or uh, in both uh, rani nsk and uh, zf uh, rani are we getting better as far as rani nsk is concerned definitely uh, it is it is uh, the order book is slightly better you know i mean for sure it is not decreasing it is slightly increasing is uh, so that's how i would put it so even uh, you know in the subsequent quarters also we you know there, there are some more orders that are likely to come through so there is no concern on the order booking of rane nsk and you know i again repeat that the warranty issue has not impacted the future business uh, with uh, maruti suzuki as far as the zf is concerned yes you know the the order booking continues to remain quite robust especially on the ecm side and as you know the order booking is driven not only by the continued export orders but also by the recent uh, legislation of the government for six airbags from october 23 that has resulted in you know order expansion sure so on the american uh, diecasting business uh, uh, you are mentioning uh, you know that uh, revenue numbers based on aluminum prices but uh, just to get a sense of what's the overall capacity there and where are we in terms of uh, run rate utilization level sir broadly speaking yeah approximately on the casting side the capacity utilization would be close to about 70% now and and machining would be closer to about 80 85 Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you very much for the uh, response. Sir. All the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Prashant Rishi from Cascade Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, sir, in the Q2 update for uh, Rani Brake Lining Limited, uh, it is mentioned that the sales to OE customers grew by 25% uh, year on year, and sales to aftermarket customers grew only by 1%. uh just wanted to understand why such a huge difference between the uh growth in two two, two segments just hold on one second yeah. i'm not clear uh, what the confusion is we grew by 36% uh, on the oe side and we grew after market by almost 90% uh, sir uh, rani brake lining on the on the q2 uh, q2 fy23 q2 to q2 we are looking at r q2 r so clearly in q2 and after market the northern zone north zone sales has uh, become a little uh, you know what do you say the material has not moved as much as we 
anticipated during Q2. Okay. So going forward, it will it will uh, probably jump jump back to the normal levels, or or is, is there a significant slowdown we are seeing in the aftermarket? Anticipation is you know it should uh, start improving. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sunil M. Kudhari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, congratulations for a really a change uh, presentation and uh, very very improved one. Uh, just I would like to suggest is we should uh, introduce one slide on Outlook also, which I think previously we were uh, showing on our presentation, but this is far improved. Thanks for that. Uh, sir, my question. Are you getting my voice, sir? Yes, yes, of course, sir. Very clearly, we can hear you. Well. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah. So, sir, broadly, what I would like to understand from you, during last two, three years, we must have tried uh, and developed uh, internally so many new products, so many maybe new customers, new segments. So, if you can qualitatively talk on the internal of our efforts and development uh, we have done, without meaning maybe customer or products, but uh, the, what the scope, what type of acceptance we are getting for those uh, new things which we are trying to develop. So some qualitative uh, talk on that. And second, come, uh, related to that only, basically we, hear, we are hearing a lot about consolidation of uh, supply base at global level and domestic level also. And there is a clear uh, tilt towards a bigger supplier and capable supplier to, from unorganized and small players. So what's, what we are uh, I mean, observing of this last two, three years trend, people are talking about China plus one. Now people are wanting work from uh, European customer want more from India and rather than uh, China. So many things global level also changing. So some qualitative remarks and detail uh, explanation on this will be really helpful. Uh, definitely, Sunil, I'll try and answer the question. So as far as the first question is concerned, you know, I will talk about uh, two companies where a lot of, lot of activities are going on. One, of course, in Rane Madras, as you are already aware, you know, the hydraulics portfolio is steadily growing. Uh, you know, our uh, penetration uh, with the hydraulics products in the tractor segment continues to increase. And, you know, we are confident that, you know, our share will continue to rise in the coming years in the hydraulics. As you know, in the mechanical, we are already a strong number one. Uh, we are also adding uh, one more product line into the hydraulics range, uh, which is in the advanced stages of uh, trials and, you know, introduction. So, so I think there is a lot of activity going on on that segment. And, of course, the other one is the whole China plus one export uh, pipeline for Rane Madras is looking very good. Uh, already mm -hmm. from last year to this year, as, as you know, we have launched several new programs that are in the production. But the RFQ pipeline and the businesses that we are winning is also very optimistic. Uh, the other company where, uh, again, a lot of activity is going on is in ZF Rane. I think here, uh, also, of course, the, you know, on the airbag side, in addition to winning new businesses, uh, thanks to the uh, uh, you know, the initiatives on our localization and, you know, fortunately the PLI scheme launched by the government, there is going to be a lot of investment going towards uh, localization. So, which should also help our margins in the coming years uh, because we are, as we said, we are localizing our inflators as well as, uh, you know, some our seatbelt webbing, etc. So, there is a lot of expansion going on towards, uh, you know, these, two, uh, you know, these products. Uh, and in terms of, uh, you know, overall growth, you know, I think clearly for Rame Group, as I have articulated earlier, you know, we, we do have, uh, you know, significant plans for growth. Uh, of course, for us, the last three years has not been easy at all. You know, in addition to COVID that everyone suffered, we also had the Rane NSK warranty issue as well as our America uh, investment you know, not to working out, going to plan. So, you know, we are waiting to solve these two before we make any significant capital commitment in new areas. And, you know, and also I want to caution that in Rane Group, 
today even today 93% of our sales is ev you know uh, ev agnostic it doesn't matter whether the vehicle is it engine or electric all our products will be there so 93% is protected so you know we don't want to uh, you know be forced to take any decisions uh, so if today 50 60% of our sales was coming from it engine maybe we would have you know ta taken certain decisions so we are you know waiting there is a lot of work going on and adding more portfolios it could be through you know more global uh, opportunities that we pursue as well as as you said consolidation in the domestic industry so so we are evaluating all those options great sir i think uh, the way I think you apply there is uh, opportunity seems to be really good and we are now well prepared also due to whatever challenges we face so just my just uh, message to convey you we have lost almost at a pbt level 40 crore in american operation during first half and uh, we are trying our best but uh, unfortunately that is not moving in the way it should have been and we are using our top talent our energy and our uh, strategic uh, talent also so as an investor of your long term investor what i would like to convey is even if you want to take some strategic decision maybe in near future maybe sell off of that operation or closing out and taking some hit of maybe 15 20 million dollar that also will be as an investor ready to support so just would like to convey message to mr ganesh to our board so please investors are very aware about this type of situation in any organization in any industry and in any business so please if you feel right please take a decision and cut it off because we have so much opportunity domestically and with indian operations so that is my message and my request Definitely, Sunil. We understand your, uh, you know, sentiments and appreciate uh, what you expressed. I think for sure, you know, we will take uh, definitely uh, the appropriate decision. Uh, last three four years has not been easy, and obviously we wanted to put best of efforts. But as you have tried correctly said, various challenges. We now even currently the with the U.S. economy, the war was not anticipated. The impact on economy is also making it challenging. So. During you know 23, I'm sure we will take the appropriate decision. Sure, sir. Thanks a lot, and wish you good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star in one now. The next question is from the line of Jigar Shroff from Financial Research Technologies. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question, sir, and uh, congratulations on good results. I have two questions. One is, sir, in the last conference call, you mentioned that you were to negotiate with our Japanese partners regarding the warranty claims with NSK Japan, but due to the COVID situation, I mean, it had got delayed. You could not visit Japan. So any update on that? So that was the first question. And uh, secondly, sir, any updates you would like to share in terms of consolidation of merging all companies and consolidation which you said you were looking into it and you give us any updates on that thank you yeah. so the so the to answer the first one yeah japan has opened up and uh, visits have taken place uh, but the matter is not yet concluded the discussions are still going on uh, as i said it's not only a joint venture partner but discussions are also going on with our customers so as I articulated in the past, it's a complex issue. So, as in when we reach a conclusion, we will definitely share with, uh, with all our uh, investors. Uh, as far as the second subject is concerned, again, the answer is that, you know, we continue to evaluate this continuously. And, you know, at the appropriate time, when we believe we are ready, we will, you know, we will share our plans with the investors. But the management is seriously looking into it, right, in terms of consolidation? Yeah, we have all, I mean, we've been looking at it for, for a while now, so we continue to look at it. Yes, absolutely. No, we recognize that for a group of our size, we have too many listed companies. It's something that we clearly recognize and that we need to act on it. Okay. Thank you so much. And all the best. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Viraj Mehta from Equiris Capital. Please go ahead. My questions have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one now. 
The next question is from the line of Manish Goyal, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yep. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, the question is first, continuing on Rane NSK. I believe uh, the last call we had at that point of time, we had used uh, around 400, 410 crores out of 490 crores uh, on the provisions done. And now we are just left with 50 crores. So uh, maybe if you can give us a perspective as to incrementally, what are the kind of recalls we are seeing or replacements we are seeing and uh, uh, going forward, what should we expect, sir? Uh, Manish, as I indicated earlier, also yes, yeah. there is only 50 crore uh, remaining. I must tell you that the warranty situation has definitely improved compared to where we were some time ago. Right? Now, however, it is difficult to predict whether this 50 crores will be sufficient or more will be needed. But that is also a function of the ongoing negotiation uh, with our customer and joint venture partner, etc. So therefore, I'm not able to give a clear picture as to how the future will be. But as of now, in the first half, after discussing, you know, after discussing with our auditors, joint venture auditors, there is no incremental provision that is needed. So, like, probably, can we take it positively in terms of that? Uh, probably, in future, we may not see any significant provisions. No, that's what I'm not able to say that. You know, I don't want to say it is a positive or a negative, but it's. If there are too many complexities to give a clear picture at this stage. Sure. And on, on, on all the problems are, you know, the engineering actions that we have taken and the, the results we are beginning to see in the field, it is reducing. So that is one definite positive. Sure. That's, okay. So you had already indicated that remedial actions have been taken and you don't see. Uh, 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 warranty requirement from the new product, uh, from the probably the corrected uh, version of it, right? Uh, sir, on on uh, uh, coming back to, I just want to support what Sunila has mentioned on our US subsidy in terms of uh, from our side, and lot many investors have been requesting you on that front. Uh, maybe say probably uh, six, eight, twelve months back when you would have taken a decision as you want to probably remain committed for, for the business for two years. And at that point of time, you did see order booking improving. But after that, probably in last six months or probably eight months now that after the war has started, things have deteriorated significantly. So would it be prudent to kind of still wait for another one, one and a half year to probably evaluate? Because we don't see any significant improvement uh, uh, despite aluminum prices have fallen in last three months. Uh, so directionally, why is it that probably what is stopping you to probably uh, take the hard decision, sir? Right. No, no. I, I think Manish, I, I, when exactly a year ago, a year and a half ago, when we we informed our investors that we are going to stay committed, that was based on a certain order book that was there, and at that point in time, there was no no nobody had talked about semiconductor shortage. And you know nobody had also talked about the current slowing down in the U.S. economy. I think definitely nothing has changed in the order book. You know whatever orders we won, uh, you know that continue to remain intact. Some of them have gotten delayed due to the semiconductor shortage, and some you know the uh, the volume has also dropped due to the semiconductor shortage. So even as I said, even this quarter. We should have done much better, but for the semiconductor shortage. So, I think clearly these uh, unforeseen, you know, and out of control events of ours as again, you know, not helping improve the situation. So, as I indicated, sometime during 23, we, you know, we will take our certain decisions. You know, whatever decisions we take, you know, whether we continue, whether we sell, whether we, you know, wind down. These are uh, again, you know, involves a lot of preparatory work. Uh, so unless uh, you know we are uh, clear which path we want to take and what it is, uh, yes. you know we won't be in a position to share. Yeah, I appreciate that, Harish, because as a minority shareholder of Rane Madras, we have seen significant dilution of equity in last probably three three times. We have done preferential issue to support our U.S. subsidy where we have already invested 240 crores, and still uh, the asking ask rate is continuing. So that is how probably as a minority we have 
like are suffering a lot uh, because of this uh, one is equity dilution and then second is on the outlook still uh, not clear uh, understood understood manish understood and last question sir on the on the your strategic pillars of growth particularly i would want to understand on on increased focus on aftermarket what you have mentioned so which are the companies which will be focusing and how do you see that uh, revenue contribution over a period of next 3 to 4 years uh, from aftermarket yeah so as far as aftermarket is concerned yes there is a renewed focus you know and i think one of the things that we have uh, done in the last uh, 12 months is to synergize the coordination between all the group companies and you know try to focus on more of a one rane brand you know traditionally in the aftermarket rane brake lining is seen as their own strong player rane madras in in their own field is seen as a strong player so rane engine valve etc so now we are synergizing across the three including in terms of management etc so that synergizing synergizing is underway and we are clearly beginning to see benefits of that so i think going forward uh, we expect the synergy benefits to help grow the business faster and we are also taking more aggressive targets okay okay any number would you like to put on revenue contribution to the overall group sales uh... like uh, in exports you already have been talking about 25 to 30% like so right. like after market uh, any any the today i think we are at about 11% is it uh, i think but no we have not set a we have not set a percentage of sales target but we have some other internal uh, targets of you know today we are at a group level i think for the year we are close to about 560 crores so we are looking at you know doubling that in the next 4 uh, years right sir i'll come back in the queue sir thank you so much thank you thank you the next question is from the line of abhishek ketan from alpha investco please go ahead yeah thank you for watching um can you just watch it uh, to the mobile or just watch i would request you to use your handset please as we are not able to hear you properly yeah is it audible much better please proceed yeah i just wanted to uh, ask one engine was so out of the total revenue in q2 how much was uh, from stationary vehicles stationary engines and engine was for q2 because i think uh, this presentation we have clubbed uh, two wheeler and stationary yeah just hold on yeah so and railway this uh, your question is only regarding stationary engines or non automotive because you know even railways and defense certain things are non automotive okay sure any number else yes. so it's about 10 it's about 10% 10% of uh, the total yeah okay but i think uh, historically what we have done is uh, we had a 28% share roughly 20 25% 28% share from stationary engines right in engine works yeah, yeah, no. yeah. the 10% that i talked about is only domestic if i okay. add export it will be another 16% okay so 26% is okay yes okay okay i understand so so and um in previous calls and in annual report we do talk about uh, r&d uh, been driven in uh, engine valves and that's what we're focusing on in engine valves in for different fuels uh, and methanol or something like that so how is the progress been or any uh, commentary anything you want to share yeah no so we are you know continuously 
working on some, I mean obviously even CNG, we are already there in some of the CNG engines in the country. Uh, we are also working on, you know, all the flex fuel uh, valve prototypes as well as even future for hydrogen is something that we have started working on. I think, you know, these, all these capabilities are definitely incremental for REVM. So we are confident that, you know, our R&D engineers and whatever budgets we are spending can develop these technologies. Okay. So for this year, I think we've marked 10 crores for R&D engine also, right? If I'm not wrong. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but yeah, definitely there's some capex towards R&D this year. Okay. And at, so what is, you know, the timeline for, you know, capitalizing or monetizing on the R&D we're doing in engine work? Sorry, I didn't understand your question. Uh, what what is the sort of the expectation on the R and D we are doing, or the way to monetize this, or how do you see the market for this? No, no, that's what. So, as, see, we are in in addition to uh, you know whatever R and D we are spending for in, for continued increase in exports. Uh, for example, hollow valve is another technology in valves. We are investing in R and D for hollow valves. We've also got some business already. And in addition to that, all these are different alternate fuels also. So this is a continuous process. You know, based on this, we have customers that we are targeting and sales that we are targeting. So we don't just, you know, try and say how can we monetize the R&D investment, but we look at it more to fund our growth. And, you know, hopefully with this uh, R&D investments that we continue to make, a 10 to 12% CAGR, uh, you know, for the value business is uh, definitely a possibility. Okay. Sorry, revenue growth of 10 to 15 percent savings. Yeah, well, I mean, it also depends on how, how much the domestic market moves. Yeah. Okay, okay. And you on this you mentioned, uh, okay. So I think while uh, mentioning, you mentioned uh, there are some specific uh, brand-wise programs also going. So is it like for specific OEMs we're doing any R&D specific programs? Is it something like that also? Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Depending on what customer you know, requirements are, if there is a specific R&D project for a customer, we do that. Okay, and that might end up in a mandate to production also. Correct. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Akshat Hariya from multi app PMS. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi, sir. Sir, uh, you know, in the previous uh, answer, you mentioned that uh, we are the sole supplier to these new models of, uh, you know, Grand Vita and Breza. So just wanted to clarify that uh, we would be sole supplier for the entire steering system or would it be like a uh, for gears or for columns or something like that? Yeah, for the, yeah my comment is for the electric steering. The gear uh, is sourced separately. So some we are there, some JTEC is there. Okay, but the, for the uh, uh, electric uh, column, we are there, 100%. Yes. Okay. Um, and sir, with regards to the semiconductor shortage issue, which is, you know, uh, having a bearing on our uh, growth in uh, NSK, uh, these specific models also that we mentioned have seen, uh, you know, uh, decent growth of higher than 35% uh, in H1 versus H1, Baleno uh, and uh, Chilerio. So, you know, would there also be an inventory lead lag -like impact uh, in this um, or, you know, any change in share of business which we are seeing? Uh, no, I'm not able to comment on that. Okay. Uh, yeah, see, you, we must uh, also look at, you know, we should not only look at sales, we should, uh, we should look at, you know, the... Uh, uh, quantity as well as the pricing. You know, there are also some uh, contractual price reductions that we pass on every year to certain customers. So that sometimes, you know, the top line growth will not be commensurate with the volume growth. So that impact has also been there. Okay, okay. So, okay, so our volume growth would be better, but we've seen some price reductions uh, because of the pass on which is there in the contract. That has also contributed a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay, but uh, okay, sir. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Choti Singh from Arjun Capital Markets Limited. Please go ahead. 
Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. So as I'm attending this call first time, sorry if I. Uh, so uh, my question is uh, like we are single source for Maruti. So which are the parts that we are providing to Maruti in that we are single source? So when we are single source, we are for certain platforms. Generally, in most of the cases, Maruti for one particular platform, they'll have one steering supplier and for another, another steering supplier. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question. Oh, but if, you're, if your question is for all products across the group, it's very difficult to answer because we supply engine valves, seat belts, uh, the rack and pinion steering, uh, brake pad. So it's very difficult to give a general answer. No, no, that's fine. And sir, uh, uh, what are the margin we target going forward for FY23 and 24? No, we generally don't give forward-looking statements because it's very difficult to predict given all the changes in the environment. And uh, sir, what's our outlook on the chip shortage issue as uh, we were facing that? So are we seeing issue resolving going forward? Yeah, so as far as the domestic Indian market is concerned, definitely last quarter and this coming quarter Q3, from we, based on what we hear from our customers, is the situation has improved. But I don't think the same can be said for some of our European and American uh, export business. There, we are still losing sales, potential sales, because of chip, uh, the chip shortage. But what we hear from our customers is definitely 2023, things should improve. Okay. And sir, a last question on the energy cost side, as we are seeing sudden jump in the energy cost in Europe. So are we facing any issue because of that? No, actually, the, uh, a lot of our plants are in Telangana and Tamil Nadu. In both these states, the government has increased the uh, electricity charges. But having said that, we continue to, uh, uh, you know, use a lot of uh, renewable power. We are big consumers of both uh, uh, solar and, and windmill. In fact, at the group level, we are almost 40% is, 32, sorry, 32% is uh, renewable across the country. And uh, so I'm not able to uh, understand your comment on whether there's a significant increase in energy charge. Whatever is the state government related charge, that, you know, that definitely is there. Okay, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique Portfolio Manager. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you and good afternoon, sir. So just one question on uh, the U.S. subsidy again, the die casting business. Uh, given the order book that we have now, given the changes that we have made operationally over the last few years there, uh, and assuming a lot of temporary headwinds that we are facing that subside, be it semiconductor, be it issues after effects of war, 6-12 months out, how should this subsidy look like financially and also operationally? So that's what, as I said, you know, we, it, it, it all depends on how much the semiconductor shortage, you know, problem goes away. Uh, if the problem is totally eliminated, there can be a substantial, you know, jump in our sales. As I said earlier, we have capacities and we have orders also in hand. Now, uh, you know, how the customers are going to ramp up, etc., is uncertain. So, therefore, you know, we are not able to give a clear picture. But theoretically, if all the orders we had in hand and the customers were, you know, uh, achieving 100% of those orders that they have given us, you know, we, we should be in a much, much better position. In fact, there will be no cash loss, which was what, you know, we were hoping for two years ago or one and a half years ago when we had shared with our investors. Yes, and, and given you say no cash loss, that also means we should be touching about $40, millions of, $40 million of revenue. Yeah, correct. I, 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 again, I'm with the caveat and with the today's aluminium prices. Yeah. No, no, fair enough. Yes, yes. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Sunil M. Kuthari from Unique BMO. Please go ahead. Thanks for opposite hearing, sir. Sir, uh, what efforts we are internally taking to reach maybe a double digit margin? I'm not asking any timeline, but uh, 
Rani Mudra is now sizing also quarterly we have cross stand alone 500-550 crore plus uh, and uh, we are getting good business, new business, new development. So what the possibility and what efforts are we taking to cross double digit uh, EBITDA margin for Rani Mudra? Yeah, so I mean there is definitely a lot of work going on. So there are, there are two things, you know, one, I mean as, as, as everyone knows, the export uh, profitability tends to be better sure. compared to uh, domestic. So, uh, without, of course, but domestic is a very important market from a technology standpoint and leadership standpoint. So, without losing focus on domestic, we are continuing to enhance our export mix. So, that should help the margin. Over and above that, there are many cost reduction initiatives the management you know, takes up on an annual basis. So. Uh, clearly, there is a lot of work going on to have a sustainable, uh, you know, double-digit EBITDA margin. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sir, same question for Rani Brick. I think 35, almost one-third, more than one-third after market, we are below 10%. So, what is the aggression or this is just temporary phase? How do you see that? No, yeah, this is largely due to the commodity uh, increases, uh, you know, that we have not been able to recover from our customers or pass on to our customers, uh, for example, in the case of aftermarket, etc. So that is the main uh, driver. Uh, of, of course, various cost reduction measures are also underway over there. But, you know, ultimately commodity prices, we are not able to fully offset in that business. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Kush Shah from Electrum PMA. Please go ahead. Mr. Shah, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. Hello, am I audible? Please proceed. Yeah, so uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was regarding the recent uh, Maruti recall of around 9,900 odd units, which had a defect in the brake assembly related component. So number one, are we involved in it? And number two, how will it uh, impact us going ahead? Yeah, we are not involved in it, so I don't know the details. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so we hope to continue this improvement journey and some of the issues that have been bothering the group for the last three years. I hope by 23 we will come to some resolution on both and then the growth will help us to accelerate the performance of the group in terms of profitability and return to investors. I really look forward to much better year in 23. Thank you very much for your patience and thank you for your participation. Thank you. On behalf of Rani Group, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.